So where are all the affordable electric cars? I know we talk about Teslas and Audis and Porsches on this channel every day, but a lot of people are looking for an affordable electric car. What is an affordable electric car? I have a great guest on my channel uh, that we're gonna discuss this together. So stay tuned, all of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so uh, we, let's talk about affordable electric cars because, um, you know, people think that, the, you know, Tesla Model 3 is an affordable electric car. Is it or is it not? Now, uh, Nicole Scott is going to be my guest of Mobile Geeks. I hope you've uh, seen her channel. If not, she's been on this channel, by the way. As a matter of fact, she is in my featured video that you see uh, for the Atron GT test drive right here. See her? No? Okay. How about now? She. Will, <laughs> that's right. That's her trying to get away uh, from the being in my shot, but we still got her. So this is her second time on my channel. I've actually uh, seen Nicole quite a few times on different events that I go to. Um, she is into talking uh, uh, mobility, self-driving features, electric car, and so forth. And so I'm kind of not really sure why we haven't had her on this show. She has a really amazing perspective. So um, we're going to talk about that because it is important. It is something that uh, kind of standing on the way of electric car revolution because not apparently, and I've, I did not know this until today, not everybody has $100,000 to buy a Tesla. So for the rest of the world, 99.9% .9 of it, Electric cars need to be affordable, uh, you know, beyond just going above, you know, the range anxiety and stuff like that. So um, let's talk about that. Of course, before I bring Nicole in, a uh, quick reminder that this channel and this show is sponsored by Byte. And check out the all-electric SUV called Ambyte, starting at only $45,000 before the incentives come into the U.S. and Europe at the end of the next year. Uh, it takes about a minute to make your reservation and zero dollars down. So join myself and over 50,000 other people who've done so. Go to the description of this video to reserve your Byton today. All right, without further ado, let me bring Nicole and we're going to talk about this. Nicole, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. All right. Well, I'm glad we finally did it. And, uh, you know, you, as always, my guests always pick the topic. And you picked a great topic because, you know, I've noticed that we talk about Teslas and Audis and, you know, everything else because they're awesome. But, you know, people have problems not being able to come up with $100,000 uh, and not even $35,000 sometimes. So let's start with that. What do you think people think that affordable car is? What is the price tag? For me, I came back from one of the e-tron drives and I was chatting with And, and she looked at me and she was like, even for $20,000, I wouldn't buy an electric car. And then she looked at me again and she's like, no, even 15. And it sort of got me thinking that for something to be affordable for a, like not low income family, but you know, a family that doesn't really prioritize like car ownership, it's just sort of a necessity. If that, you know, if they're going to buy an electric car, it needs to be almost as much as a gas car. And that's just not where we are today at all. And I get that we're just starting out and it's too much for me to expect. But at the same time, I have to ask the question, why is no one really coming out with an electric car? I mean, you and I are constantly at events and I'm pretty much mostly talking about Audi, e QC, Porsche Taycan. I mean, I'm just talking about luxury cars that are all over 80K. And that's not where the average person is even considering to buy. So I'm just, I really want it for the masses. Well, yeah, no, I, I think we know the answer that it's much, you know, if they're going to make something that's new, they're going to have to sell it at a higher price because it's more, you know, more to make. But so what do you think that magic number is? Do you think it's 20,000? Do you think it's 15,000? I think it's, I think it's around 15,000, to be honest. I think like that, 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 like, let's just take like, in my head, I'm picturing a, a, a multi-generation family in Italy and they buy one car and it's an electric car and that car is like 15K. Like to me, that's when affordable cars have arrived. When a single family, a, a, a large family buys one car and that car is electric. And I think that that number tends to be below 20. 
Well, okay. So now the one of the uh, one of the lowest price cars right now are Nissan Leaf and uh, Zoe, uh, Renault Zoe in Europe. Uh, now Zoe pricing is a little tough to figure out because you know you can buy it without the battery. You can lease the battery separately. But if you translate it to dollars, US dollars, I would say thirty thousand dollars. But now you can you can be very lucky and then you all can apply the seventy five hundred dollar tax incentive here in the U.S. and uh, in some states like Colorado up to five thousand dollars in tax credit. So now we're talking about under twenty thousand dollars for a stripped down version. Uh, I mean, yes, one hundred fifty one hundred fifty one miles, which is better than it used to be. Um, do you think that would be a, a, a relatively good? sort of um, solution and if so why aren't people buying them i think that it would be a very good solution but the zoe is actually not available in the us where the strong subsidies are and i think in europe it's still a little bit all over how subsidized the evs are so you're right that there are a lot of renault zoe's all over europe but i still don't see them as a popular uh, EV. Like when I look around, so I'm, I'm actually based in Berlin. When I look around Berlin, I think I've seen like maybe 10 Renaults in the past four months that I've lived there. So even though I know it's a very popular car, it's not one that I see very often. So for me, I guess because I'm not touching it, <laughs> I don't feel like it's really arrived. Yeah, no, I have to admit, so I recently moved to uh, Sacramento, and once again, yeah, I lived in Silicon Valley before that, where every other person seems like to be driving a Tesla, and, and I found out that here in the real world, that's not actually not a very common occurrence. Um, and, you know, overall, you know, and, and, and even Nissan Leaf has been one of the most popular electric cars, and we don't see them on the road as often either, even here in, in Sacramento. Um, yes, uh, Zoe is obviously not uh, up for U.S. tax credit <laughs> incentives, <laughs> but there are some incentives in Europe and, and stuff like that. You can get it to closer to $20,000. So what do you think is going to take? Do you think it's just a matter of trickle down type of the thing where it's, you know, the the the, uh, the new car manufacturers will finally reach that point? Or do you think it may be uh, all the cars that were at thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars when they, they were sold new reaching that in a used car market? That's actually a really good point. I did a little bit of research on exactly that not that long ago. And what I found is that a lot of people are very reluctant re reluctant to buy used EVs, mostly because they don't know where to get them serviced. Um, I have a friend who bought a, a used Leaf and she's constantly on Facebook looking for a mechanic that's able to service an older Leaf. So I think when people get on the forums and start to do research around how they're going to take care of this used electric car, the feedback isn't all that positive. So I think that that's stopping a lot of people. Yeah, if you have a Tesla, sure, right? You know where to get that serviced, but that Tesla is not going to be affordable, right? Even secondhand to me. What anyways. about, uh, I mean, what about servicing the Leaf at the Nissan dealerships? I mean, they, they should be able to services. I mean, it's kind of required by law. Has she had any issues with that? Yeah, she, she brought it in and she wasn't able to get it fixed. So she kept on having to look for a mechanic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was it was it was one of the more interesting stories that I've sort of been tracking just her her saga with her with her ill purchased leaf. So is that just one time kind of a thing? She had something very, uh, very unique that had it to be fixed or because or or they just don't want to service used leaves at all. No, so she I, I believe she was she was having an, an engine issue. Right. So something something to do with like the battery taking the proper voltage. I think power. I found the problem right there. They couldn't find an engine. They probably should have looked for the motor <laughs> and then they would have took it, taken care of the whole problem. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Go no, on. Go point, on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think it was just a, like a, a power conversion issue. And so it should have, you know, it should it, it, it seemed to me like it should have been relatively easy to fix. But then she just seems to still be on Facebook looking for another mechanic. I don't know. Wow. I, I mean, so I, I actually think that used, you know, even leaves. I'm not really a big fan of the look, uh, but used leaves and bolts and so forth that are, you know, getting to closer to $20,000 um, is definitely a, um, a good solution for people who can afford even a $35,000 uh, maybe Model 3. But let me ask you this. 
is ownership of an electric car, even if it's a used affordable one, don't you still have to be in a certain income bracket uh, to own one? So for example, in a lot of apartment complexes, you can't charge the car at all. You don't have a dedicated guaranteed charger, if any charger at all. So you kind of have to either rent a house or live in a house, which kind of puts you in a higher bracket. Then when you get the car, you know, you also have to make sure that you, uh, you have a charger installed. That's another expense that a lot of people don't have to do if they have gas cars do you think the world is just maybe not ready for affordable electric cars just yet so this is a question that i ask myself um a lot because i'm a i'm an urbanite i live in the city center and i like to rent electric vehicles when i do car sharing now berlin's a fairly dense city and they're very playful with their mobility services and actually a lot of the charge points are mobile charge points now so like there are boxes that just hang out on the corner and you just drive your car up to them and 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 <laughs> you, sort just, of you just describe them as drug dealers they just hang out on the corner <laughs> you can come over and get your fix and you're on your way that's right all right <laughs> all right and just look for the guy with the tattoos and one eye yeah. got it yeah they're, okay. they're usually covered in stickers and right. maybe urine but you know right 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 Okay, well, okay, so yeah, I mean, this is why I'm having you on because you're in Europe and you guys have a completely different type of sort of infrastructure for, for cars yeah. and everything. I know Ionity has been growing there as well. Um, so you don't think in Europe uh, you, you have to be kind of maybe a higher income uh, uh, tax. So what about not apartment yet. complexes? No, not yet. Yeah, sorry? What about apartment complexes? Can people uh, get, uh, get the, you know, the electricity then? Or there's still limitations with infrastructure? No, I, so I, th I think that all cities in Europe have a little bit of an infrastructure issue, which is why they have these weird boxes just sort of hanging out all over the place. But we're never going to see critical mass until we get enough charge points. But the biggest problem with urban centers is that when your car is done charging, nobody wants to go back out and like unplug it and then repark it, right? Like when you park for the night, you want to park for the night. And so this this to me is the is the issue with the EV in, in 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 pretty much any big urban center where you don't have enough par like parking in apartment complexes or apartment complexes only have a certain amount. There's this really interesting company that I actually talked to recently, and they have a cool solution where they have like one charging cable, and then it has like six tentacles come out at the end <laughs> oh i i see those chargers for my phones on gas stations that's right i like okay all right i like that okay yeah but but i mean um I, w I was chatting with them and they were like yeah well the biggest problem is priority of charging right which car gets charged first right so you can sort of like plug in a whole bunch while having flexible infrastructure but then they still need to decide like who like which car gets the priority in charging right so maybe if you have a job that requires you to drive or you're, you know, it's only an occasional EV. So like, there's a lot of like uh, logistical issues around it. But at the same time, I think that we're sort of getting there for more flexible infrastructure, but it is one of those things, right? Until we figure out how people are gonna comfortably park their car and charge it, then I think in the urban centers, we're not gonna see that kind of easy adoption. So you're right that there's a certain, like currently there's a certain income bracket where you'd have to have an apartment be able to afford a parking spot and have that parking spot have a charger. Yeah, yeah. No, I have to say, so like, uh, I don't know if you know, I actually, I, I returned my last Tesla. I don't have a Tesla anymore. Um, I'm kind of taking it, well, cause I don't know what I'm gonna get next and I really didn't like the ownership experience. So I have a, I have a Volt right now. So, and you know, I live in a house. Uh, if I didn't, I don't think I could have a, a, a vault because the only thing we can do here in California, we can force the landlord to install it, but the landlord would charge you for installation and it could be, you know, one, two thousand dollars. That's like one month rent and you might be leaving in another seven or eight months. It's not a solution. So here I would say you definitely have to be up there already to to uh, to get a, a car. But let me switch gears here. Let's talk, let's go over some of the premium and not so premium uh, manufacturers. And we're gonna do startups versus uh, legacy and see which one of them is closer and maybe even have some actual goals on on uh, getting that affordable 15, 20,000 uh, dollar, dollar car. And we'll talk about what specs would be acceptable for them to have. Um, but before that we do that, of course, um, 
just uh, we're gonna take a quick break because we're splitting this video up into two. Um, the the rest of this video is gonna be on Nicole's channel called uh, Mobile Geeks, which you should check out anyway. The link is going to be in the description of this video, and that's where she's actually going to answer these questions. We're going to talk quite a few um, other things. I just want to also give a quick shout out to one of my uh, Patreons, uh, uh, Bernard Simon. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon community, uh, where you can watch most of these videos live and uh, contributing to this independent channel. And uh, lastly, don't forget to subscribe to our VIP list, something that we send out, a story that we just couldn't fit on uh, either this channel or e4lecture.com. Um, that goes into um, the hands of our writer, AJ, who's also located in Europe, actually. And then it makes it all the way to their, your inbox. Go to e4electric.com uh, slash VIP. All right, guys, I will see you on Nicole's channel. Check out the description of this video, and that's where that link is. Other than that, uh, see you next time. And remember to stay charged.